Welcome to State of Tech. Let's take a look at the top five launchers available for the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. Now this list is going to be very subjective. These are the top five launchers that I feel are the best, but you might have a favorite of your own that doesn't make the list. Let us know in the comment section down below which one of the launchers is your favorite that I've selected, and let us know also if you're using a different launcher that we can take a look at in the future. So what we're going to do is where I have actually added all these launchers to a default home screen. So I've got Google Now, Action Launcher 3, EV Launcher, Nova Launcher, and then Arrow Launcher. Now when you first install one of these launchers from the Google Play Store, it's going to ask you to make it your default launcher. Now since I've already launched all of these and kind of done a little bit of customization, it won't do that. But if it does not do that for whatever reason, you can quickly come into your settings, go into your apps section, up the top right hand corner of the screen, tap on those three little dots, and then go into default apps. Now you're going to see home screen down at the bottom of the screen, tap there, and you're going to see all the launchers that you have installed. Tapping on any one of those launchers will set it as your default launcher, and then when you tap the home button, it's actually going to launch you into that launcher. So we're going to start off with the Google Now launcher. So here's the Google Now launcher. You might notice that things look a little bit different than our actual Samsung default launcher. We have a Google bar up at the top of the screen that's going to be persistent. This does not move. Our folders look a little bit different whenever we actually open them and use them. The icons look different and you'll notice the swipe up and swipe down do not access our app drawer. We're going to have to tap on the icon right there in the middle bottom of the dock to access our app drawer and we can see all of our icons here are now very different. This is because Google now tends to prefer to use the actual default icons where the Samsung Galaxy experience actually changes the look and appearance of icons to match all of theirs. So that's a little bit different. Now swiping over from the actual edge of the screen here, we can see that it now launches Google Now instead of Bigsby. So the only way now to launch Bigsby is to actually use the physical on device button to access it that way. Now does this mean that Google Now is better than the Samsung Experience Launcher? It doesn't, but it might just be a preference choice for you to actually use Google Now instead. And I like using Google Now Launcher because it is more of the default Google experience right here on my device. And it gets rid of Bigsby, honestly, which I don't plan on using. I plan on sticking with my Google Now cards. And I still have access to my Google Assistant by long pressing on the home button. And I can even still use all the apps panels right here on the edge of the screen. And I have access to my Google Bar up at the top of the screen. This is just what I more prefer because I like to use more stock Android devices, but there is a very subjective feeling to all these launchers. It's really going to depend upon what you want to use. Now the next launcher we're going to take a look at is Action Launcher 3. Now from the very get-go, this might look very similar to the Google Now launcher if you're just coming from Google Now. If I tap on the button in the bottom of the screen, this opens up my app drawer. You can see this looks very similar to the Google Now experience. And it's even got a search up the top of the screen and my most recent apps up in the top. Now there is a persistent Google bar at the top, but there are some more options up here where I can actually lock my dock, system settings, manage apps, and even view settings for Action Launcher 3. Even the folders look the same with Action Launcher 3. They're kind of similar to how the Google Now experience is. But what's nice is if I tap my home button, it's actually here on my home screen, I can swipe over and here's an actual list of apps. Instead of actually having to go into the app drawer, I can view a list of apps. And I thought that was really nice. This is something that Action Launcher 3 has had since they've been Action Launcher and I've always been drawn to this experience here with this app drawer kind of in a list mode in the left hand side of the screen. And you can even quickly scroll to a letter by itself. Now what's new in Action Launcher 3 that I also appreciate is swiping over from the right hand side. Here I can actually add in some docs. They're kind of a different home page if you will where I can add some widgets and I've got quick access to my calendar and Google Play Music just by adding in these widgets to kind of the second home screen experience. Now what's also nice is that the icons themselves can have what Action Launcher calls shutters. If I swipe up on an icon, it can actually open up a widget directly on the icon. So I thought that was a nice feature here to have direct access to an app's widget just by swiping up on the app itself. And you can see here's my messages widget. I'm not even in the messages app. I can just see the widget just by swiping up on the app. So one of the things that really sets Action Launcher 3 aside from all the other launchers is its customization. So if I tap and hold anywhere on the open screen, I can see all of my home screens. If I tap the star, it's going to make one my default home screen. I can adjust my wallpapers and widgets, and I can come into the settings. 
Now you can see that I am a supporter of the app and this just gives me Action Launcher 3 Plus, which unlocks all of the features. Some of these might be locked by default and if you actually want to customize those, you'll want to go ahead and purchase the Plus package. But there is a lot of customization that you can do in the free version. I just happen to want it to use this as my default launcher for a while and so I purchased the Plus to be able to fully customize my home screen experience. Now you can see here I can quickly launch a pixel launcher feature so I can actually have it apply all these different widgets and icons and shortcuts quickly to get my launcher to look like the pixel launcher. So now if I tap apply all, we'll tap OK, it's applied all the features to make it look like the pixel launcher and now coming back out here you can see everything looks a lot like the pixel launcher. So I now I have that swipe up into my app drawer, the app drawer takes the full screen. I can see all my icon folders are a lot different to max the way that the pixel actually looks. So that was really cool. I can even come back into the settings and I have access to quick theme, quick bar display, my desktop grid, my dock, folders, drawers, unread badges, shortcuts, which are gestures and actions, and I can even back up and import from Google Drive. So that's really cool. If you wanted to make sure what you'd set up with Action Launcher 3 goes over to another device, you can actually back it up to Google Drive and then import it into another Action Launcher on another device. But there is a ton of customization. I don't have time to go over all of it. I just wanted to show you the basics of what Action Launcher looks like. And you can see all the options here that you're going to have to customize your launcher. So the next launcher we're going to look at is the Arrow Launcher. And you can see this one looks a little different, but it does have some similar tones to the other launchers as well. Here we can see our app folders and our app folders do take up the full screen, kind of similar to how the Samsung app folders do. It does take up the full screen. I think that looks really cool. It just gives you all of your icons right there in the middle, quickly unobstructed with nothing else in the background. We do have the app drawer similar to kind of Google Now, but in this one we can see that this gives us a list instead of the app icons all laid out. But we can quickly scroll over here on the left right hand side of the screen all of our apps by the letters. We can also search for apps on the top of the screen. Tapping up there, we can do a horizontal layout. We have a vertical layout, and then we can even hide apps if we wanted to quickly right there for inside those settings. Now swiping over to the left where we did see a Google Now card and also the apps list in Action Launcher, this kind of gives us some cards of our recent apps. So here we can see up at the top there's recent videos, frequent apps, people that we contact, reminders. We can even sign in with a work or school account for Microsoft to see all of our documents. We can even enable calendar to quickly get some widgets. If we tap on edit, we can actually edit these screens and we can even add in our own widgets or we can go ahead and hide any of the ones that come in by default. So I thought that was kind of neat. It's a little bit of a different view here. And this is a really lightweight launcher. I like the options for searching quickly from anywhere on the screen. If I swipe down here, you see I have a search option. Swiping up doesn't really do anything at the moment. But if we come into our actual settings, we'll tap and hold. We see app widgets, arrow settings, feedback, and even changing the wallpaper. And we can even change and add in home screens by swiping over to the right here. We can delete them by tapping the trash icon and then actually making it our default home screen by tapping on the home icon. Now in the arrow settings, we can actually see there are quite a few options in here. We have gestures, backup and restore, which we also saw back in restore in Action Launcher 3. This will give us the option to restore to another device, or if we choose to do another launcher, we can always come back in and restore our options. The utility page, we can enable the utility page, and that's where all the cards were. We'll come back into our settings. We have general settings for arrow, arrow launcher, which we can see give us some clocks, we can sign in with some accounts, we can do our filters, high performance, so we can disable some visual effects if we feel like it's running a little slower on our device. That's a nice option. I really haven't seen that in a launcher before, giving us a high performance mode. We can change our notification badges, icon layout, we can change our icon packs. So a lot of these features are similar in a lot of launchers. This one just has them more out in the open. And what was nice about this one is this one is completely free. There's nothing that I really need to purchase right now. I can support them if I wanted to by giving them a five star rating and helping them out on their surveys. But for the most part, a lot of these features are free. Where Action Launcher had a good portion of the settings for free, I did have to purchase it to do deep customization, such as changing um, folder sizes to a certain extent and different text options. 
but it looks like Aero Launcher has a lot of these unlocked for free. And you can see right here from the home screen, it does give me a nice option right from the get go. I do like the home screen layout of this one as well. It's a lot cleaner, it's simple, and it keeps everything right here at the palm of your hands. And the next one we're gonna look at is EV Launcher. This one is really known for its search options. So if I swipe up, I can actually access the app drawer. There is no app drawer icon like other apps, but you can hide them on the other launchers. This one just by default does not have an app drawer and I prefer that because I'm used to using a pixel launcher, to be honest. I can swipe down and I can actually see a search. Now this search isn't just directed at my device, this is directed anywhere. So I can see that I can search for nearby restaurants, stores, places, I can search in maps, I can search in the Play Store. So the search isn't just localized, this search is open to any sort of the, one of the apps. Now some people might see this as a positive and some might see this as a negative, being that this is a search option, it does need access to anything on your device, and so that could be a security risk for some people, but I like to trade off those risks for the rewards here that I find, and that is the search option that EV Launcher does provide. So now what I can do is swipe back up, come back out to my home screen, you'll notice the icons here, this does have a custom icon pack with EV Launcher, so if I swipe up I can see that there is a bunch of different icons that it's using, I do like these, I think it looks really clean and it's really useful here it's giving me a nice layout of all the icons now you'll notice there in the launcher too I can also change how the launcher looks so I can get more of a list layout and a grid layout and then if I come into the settings of EV launcher so what we'll do is we'll long press an empty area we can see wallpapers widgets and settings tapping on settings I have a lot of customization for home screen dock icon pack unread badges gestures app drawer search I can hide apps backup and restore feedback. I can even switch to another launcher. So this one doesn't have as much deep customization as the other ones. You see everything is kind of generalized into little customization options. It's mainly that search feature that I think really sets EV apart from all the other ones because the search isn't just directed at your local device, it's directed everywhere. So you can search for a Starbucks roll that mattered right from within the search on the launcher. So that was cool. And there are other, obviously you can do a deep customization EV launcher. The main reason you're gonna to wanna to use this one, again, is for that search. I just can't really drive that one home enough with EV launcher. The search is awesome. It's amazing. It's one of the reasons I would prefer to use this launcher over any of the other ones. So the next launcher we're gonna take a look at is Nova Launcher. Now I've already themed this one to kind of look like the Google Pixel Launcher because Nova Launcher is usually the one that I end up using the most. And I do like the Pixel Launcher. So you see there's nothing here to swipe over, but I do have some gestures, so if I swipe down, it opens up my notifications. Swiping up, it will open up the app drawer. So that's something that you can do in any of the launchers, but I just have it set up here in Nova Launcher. So now if I long press on any empty area, I have wallpapers, widgets, and settings, just as we've seen across multiple of the launchers. Tapping on the settings, I can see that there are a lot of different settings here. So I have desktop, app and widget drawers, dock, folders, look and feel, night mode, gestures and inputs, unread count badges, backup and import. And then to unlock some of the more advanced settings, you do actually have to purchase Nova Prime, which is very similar to how Action Launcher 3 does it. For the most part, you can access a lot of the customization in the free version, but if you want to access even more and dive deeper into the customization, there is a Prime package that you can purchase in the Play Store. But you can go through any one of these settings. You see there's a lot for the desktop. There's a lot for the app drawer and widgets. So you can really make this launcher your own, customize it as much as you want to, make it as deep as you want to. And what I do is I actually use this one and I back up and import with Google Drive. So that's how I was able to quickly get the Google Launcher looking like this right here on my device without having to do much work. But there's also the option you see, I can actually customize colors in this app drawer, I can customize the grids, I can hide apps, I can customize the dock, I customize the look in the folders, the transparency of them, customize the Google Persistent bar at the top, shut things off, turn things on. It's all a matter of preference here, and this is what all the launchers allow you to do, is really customize your device as much as you want to for as, for as little as you want to, for that matter. But it just gets you away from the Samsung launcher or the Samsung experience. But I'm not saying that the Samsung experience is a bad launcher. It's actually gotten a lot better. So if we come back into the Samsung experience, I mean, this is our default launcher. And I think that this one is a really, really good one as well. This is a great option. 
It's just these five apps give you a little bit more customization than the stock launcher does on your Galaxy S8. But I mean, the fact that you can swipe up and there's an app drawer here, you can add folders, you can change the grid size, you can change your wallpaper. A lot of the launchers offer the same features. It's all just which one do you want to have on your device. Now keep in mind that since we are using a Galaxy S8, the actual S8 launcher will also run in the background beside any one of these five launchers. Now I haven't noticed any slowdowns in using any one of these launchers. In fact, in recording this video, I've opened all five of them and I haven't noticed my device slow down at all. So the S8 does have a lot of power behind it to keep these launchers running in the background and using all those customization features. I would suggest just try, and try them all out. See which one you like the most, see which one gives you the most customization for what you want to do, and then try that one out and stick with it for a little while. Again, this list is very subjective. These are just the five ones that I prefer to use on any one of my devices. Let again, let us know in the comment section below which one is your favorite launcher, or if you have another one that you want us to take a look at, let us know in the comment section below as well. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video, and we'll see you in the next one.